Hello everybody, it's me on Monday afternoon p.m. around 5 or 6 o'clock, I don't know the exact time, late afternoon. Got a new hat, I don't know what NM stands for, which state, but uh, for, to me it stands for new man, N for nature, N for new, M for man, new man state. That's what my hat says to me. I'm in a new man or a new nature state. When you're born of the spirit of truth and have Christ's anointing dwelling in you. It's really, really simple and it hurts. Ouch! Romans 8, 9 through 11. You find dwell there three times. And it also says, he that does not have Christ in him, dwelling in him, is none of his, none of God's, none of saint sons saved, that the Lord Jesus Christ saved when he came, gave his precious human body and death, gave his precious human blood, once for all forever, took care of the sin barrier, brought it down, went into the mercy seat, and it's the mercy seat. He released grace, mercy takes his place between grace and peace, so you have love, grace, mercy, peace, joy. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit of truth, Christ in you. Okay? I am going to try to make clear 2 Timothy. This one scripture has been so misused and abused over the years by Christians I'm not a Christian. I'm a Christ-anointed believer, and I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, raised from the dead, ascended and seated, great high priest forever, Lord of lords, King of kings, head of his body, the church. Second Timothy, the third chapter, the 14th verse. Please open up your Bibles if you follow me that way. Second Timothy, third chapter. 14th verse. 1 and 4 are two of my, for I have two sets of numbers that belong to me, 471 and 850, and the 5 is in the fifth position, H, 5, mercy, favor, and grace, 5. All right, so we've got 14 here, 471 are my first three numbers. Verse 14, but as for you, Timothy, Paul is talking to Timothy, his last letter written to Timothy, and in 2 Timothy, in the fourth chapter, he speaks of his time of departure, his death, his crossing over, they beheaded him. Okay? But as for you, Timothy, continue in what you have learned. Now, Timothy started learning around the age of five or six, his mother and his grandmother, who were Jewesses were teaching him as a young boy, 8 to 10, all right? And he probably had some instruction into his teens. And Paul saw the anointing upon Timothy and took him with him in his second missionary journey and started identifying Timothy as his spiritual son, all right? So Paul is grooming Timothy, and Bible theologians believe that Timothy became head bishop of Ephesus head elder and head bishop from 65 to the end of his life, which could have been in the late first century into 90 AD or later. Okay, what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, the whom's are his mother, his grandmother, and Paul. All right, here's the point I want to make. This is the scripture that's taken out of text all the time. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teachings. That's true. But all scripture does not teach the three or four lines before that. All of the Old Testament does not belong to us today, the Gentiles, under the dispensation or stewardship of the mystery. And there's another brother out there teaching the mystery right. 
So investigate anybody that's teaching the mystery. Are they teaching it right? And there's a couple brothers out there that are moving dead on perfect about the mystery of Paul. It's the mystery time. Paul's message, my gospel, nine times in a revised standard in verse 10 where I'm reading, 2 Timothy, third chapter, starting at verse 10. If you read a RSV 1952, you get my teachings and my, 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 nine times. And there's a my earlier and a my after. There's actually 11 or 12 my, my, Paul saying my beliefs and teachings. And I'm inspired by the same Holy Spirit word truth that was in the Lord Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit of truth. The Spirit is truth, and don't forget the truth. All right, now, back to this all Scripture. That doesn't mean you put all Scripture in the bowl, stir it up, and it's all good for you. It's not. Only the gospel that Paul taught to Timothy that brings him to salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ is what's being talked about here. And I'll prove it. Let's read on. Uh, I'm reading just before 15, the last line of 14, knowing from whom you learned it. And he learned it, like I said, from his mother, his grandmother, and Paul, especially Paul. He traveled with Paul, heard Paul teach, heard Paul dictate letters that other people wrote for Paul, and then Paul signed with his own hand in the salutation or the sign-off, in big letter, because his vision was pretty tired at the end of his life, in his 60s, mid-60s, Paul the aged, in his mid-60s. And I'm the same way. I'm getting a cataract in my right eye. I do all my reading and seeing with my left eye. I'm 74. I'm an elder in years and time on earth, and I'm an elder, a servant in the Word of God for 44 years. I know a little bit about it. And my little bit can be added to your little bit, and we both get a whole bunch. <laughs> Back to the last line in verse 14, 2 Timothy 3, 14. Knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the Scripture writings and especially Paul's writings is 13 plus 1, 14 letters. Can you do math? 13 plus 1. You know what the plus 1 is? Hebrews ends in grace B. So I got to put it in with Paul's last five. Paul's last five all end with grace B, and Hebrews ends with grace B. So actually there's six grace B letters in the last six years of Paul's life. There is a real strong possibility that Paul wrote Hebrews. If not, it was somebody who's been to Italy, he was a Jew, and he knew Paul's life and ministry like the back of his hand and knew the exact gospel and teachings that Paul taught who, if Paul did not write Hebrews. And if Paul did not write Hebrews, Luke wrote more scripture than Paul, if you count the verses in the New Testament. I did that. Didn't count every word, but I counted all the verses. Okay, a little golden nugget there. All right, read on. To instructing you, oh, here's my next point. Let me back up, read 15 again. 2 Timothy 3.15, and who from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And I add Lord in head, Shua. And let me back up. To instruct you for salvation. All Old Testament scripture does not instruct you for salvation. Salvation in what or by what or who what? Through, remember, my alpha arrow lays flat, horizontal, through, and it's through beyond the precious body, the life of the Lord. Nothing greater can a person do than to lay down their life for their brother they love. Through the body, 
through the blood that was taken into the mercy seat and grace and mercy and peace released in a greater way. And a new part two second is better with better promises, covenant, testament, covenant, part two. There is part one, part two, part three, part four, and maybe a total of 10 parts when we get to heaven, 10 levels, 10 degrees. It's not going to be boring in heaven. There's going to be things in heaven to do greater than anything you've done on earth. All right. Instruct you for salvation through faith in. Remember, I tell you, it's not invisible faith. It's not blind faith anymore. It is faith in question mark. Faith in what? Faith in Christ anointing, the Holy Spirit, word, truth, Christ in you. Christ not in you, you're none of his. Holy Spirit not in you, not born of the Spirit, you're none of his. That's simple, all right? And it's faith in Christ Jesus, who is Lord, head, King of kings, and great high priest forever. Got to go, 11 minutes and 9 seconds. That scripture right there where it says all scripture is inspired by God, 110% true. But all scripture does not bring you to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, Lord and head of his body, the dispensation or stewardship of the mystery. Now, today, revealed, made known to those that love truth and are born of the spirit. B period, Eugene Bear with another 12-minute teaching. I love you. Like my new hat, new man, new nature, new man. I'm in the state of the early out resurrection. Our mortal bodies quickened and made alive. Selah. Think on that one. Bye.